uh, last month I came across one kid uh, with refractory hypoxemia or viral pneumonia. All the efforts were being made to save that child uh, with all the options available under the sun. Though the outcome was not favorable and we could not save that child, in spite of all the efforts being made 24-7 for 5 days or uh, the time child was with us. The reason I made that video, uh, the, I made, I'm making this video is that to share the journey of that 5 days and what all op options one can explore while dealing with cases of refractory hypoxemia. So let's just dive in with the presentation of that child. My name is Dr. Kanjan Shah. I'm a consultant pediatric intensivist and practicing at Snake Children Hospital at Ahmedabad. So if I briefly narrate the history of this child, two-year-old boy and with acute illness with fever for three days, uh, cough cold for two days uh, and increased rate of uh, like respiratory distress was there, but parents complained of fast breathing for just one day. Past history, child had history of seizures and epilepsy and this time also he had seizures developed just prior to the hospitalization. And with this complaint, he was brought to the hospital. On examinations, uh, his vitals were fine, but then just in RS examination, there was a tachypnea. He was breathing at around 45, 50 per minute and sats on room ever was uh, 75 to 80 and he was immediately started with oxygen and seizures were controlled immediately. So very acute presentation uh, of this child. And the very first echo showed uh, that there were signs in the, yeah, so basically X-ray was done and X-ray showed uh, this uh, right upper zone consolidation and right side consolidations. Uh, his reports were counts for 14,000 CRP of 7, SGPT, create and rest of the things were normal. So like any other cases of pneumonia would come, he was started with, uh, he was made, uh, IV fluids were started. And after sending the reports, blood culture and IV antibiotics and flu wave was started. And respiratory support initially as child was distressed, uh, high flow nasal uh, humidified, uh, high flow oxygen was started. So uh, then after, you know, three, four hours off on uh, high flow, a child was not maintaining saturations, work of breathing was increasing. So as there was no clinical improvement in spite of starting that treatment, and there was actually a worsening of respiratory status, he was put on ventilator. Now for the next 24 hours, he was on conventional ventilator where gradually, you know, whatever the X-ray kept on worsening, as you can see, a tube was withdrawn from like whatever the scene in this X-ray. And uh, he was made, uh, you know, fluids were restricted, all the, anti all the uh, preventive measures as well as ARDS protocols were in place. In spite of doing that, the child kept on deteriorating, his OI kept on increasing, and that's when decision was taken to put him on high frequency uh, oscillator ventilation. Uh, with During that time, again, all uh, AIDS protocols management uh, was in check and it was in place. Proning was done and recruitment maneuver with uh, high map and everything was tried. Still, his SATs were staying around uh, 75 to 80 and uh, no other organs were being involved single organ rest all things were fine so he, you know parents were given the option of ecmo uh, vv ecmo vv ecmo was not be able to, could not be possible in ahmedabad so we tried to speak to mumbai and uh, mumbai we could uh, get a hold of a team who could uh, they can come to ahmedabad do ecmo here and then they can transport that was option number one and that that uh, usually charges around 15 lakhs or so for that particular thing and another option was to shift the child airlift the child and send to mumbai on a conventional ventilator with and then ecmo being started there again air ambulance would have uh, was costing around 5 lakhs or so 
so very dicey situation as child was uh, sats were not maintaining the risk of transport was very high parents were ready to take that risk but still somehow you know uh, the, because of the very liberal nature of this uh, condition uh, at more uh, like transport was not possible so that's when uh, you know we could uh, co- contact a team from baroda dr vishal and his team and they agreed to do ecmo at our place uh, meanwhile we did check echo dr digesh had seen the echo there was no uh, cardiac dysfunction also and just pure respiratory we did send et culture and uh, biofire or the multiplex pcr from the respiratory panel this is again something very uh, crucial it's an expensive uh, investigation but in such cases it would help to clinch the diagnosis and might change a, a management so so you can see ecmo lines are in place right ijv you can see uh, that is a uh, uh, vv ecmo catheter and one in the femoral so uh, dr kunal gohil he is a vascular surgeon he came and helped us with the line insertion and vv ecmo was started so pump was there so basically the cost of first day cost itself was 3 to 4 lakhs and because of the all the devices and equipments and the team that had come so it's it's an expensive affair uh, to do uh, for the any family and uh, you know as of now none of the as far as my knowledge goes none of the government hospitals would offer this treatment so basically then uh, parents did, uh, decided to do at ecmoid our place and this team from baroda headed by dr vishal that come and uh, inserted the cannula and they their team was there so 48 hours uh, night day night they were here uh, we were here on the child and ecmo was started initially there was improvement in form of ac saturation did go up and the heparin uh, infusions and those things were being closely monitored and uh, et secretions which was sent that showed a uh, human metanemo virus was positive uh, rest all things were uh, no, sorry rest all things were negative and it did behave like a viral illness so now i'll just show you the up to date about human beta nemo virus we'll briefly discuss about that so this virus from 2001 investigators from netherland discovered a new virus and it was designated as human beta nemo virus it's basically from the family of pneumoviridae which comprised of large envelope negative sense rna virus uh pathogenesis is that it has been demonstrated to uh, replicate in the respiratory tract of with, uh, the chimpanzee and monkey transmission is mainly direct or close contact with contaminated secretions and which may involve large particle aerosols in incubation period being 5 to 9 days in most cases uh and so you know there are reports from netherlands uk australia canada kenya china so multiple countries have reported infections with or this virus uh, children first infections usually occurs early in life and zero prevalence data suggests that most children are affected by the age of 5 years uh, mostly it causes acute respiratory illness or a uh, respiratory illness mainly and few of them may develop lower respiratory tract as well uh predominant symptoms would be cough fever rhinitis wheezing but rarely encephalitis have also been reported immunocompromised hosts are at uh, increased risk from having severe disease from this uh, particular virus diagnosis is by rt pcr which we did in this child as well and Uh, treatment as you can see treatment is purely supportive uh, some drugs like ribavirin they have uh, you know they if you see the evidence there is they are not recommended for present for hmpv infections uh, but this child in desperate situation we had given oral ribavirin uh, but the literature is not supporting that infection control prevention is mainly by infection control 
so this is in brief about human metanema virus uh, this is up to date uh, literature from that recently being if you can see it's been recently updated in january 2022 so coming to the summary yeah so rt pcr is the diagnostic uh, supportive treatment yeah that's it so this was in brief about the human beta nemo virus so uh yeah so basically then after doing that uh, in after starting we we ecmo 48 to 72 hours child started getting a uh, hemodynamic compromise he had bleeding because of heparin most likely uh, act tests were regularly being monitored but still child uh, had hemorrhages and uh, after 48 hours or so of starting it no child succumb to his illness uh, we could not save this child so basically reason why i shared this case as i said before that you know if there is a single organ involvement one should explore uh, one should give options of all the possible steps right from starting from simple oxygen then comes your high flow if that then conventional ventilator in conventional ventilator we use all the ards protocols like low tidal volume high time being high and uh, you know high p uh, recruitment when you was going to the high frequency ventilator the conventional ventilator is not helping uh, again in that recruitment maneuver pruning uh, all those maneuver being done and then last the vv ecmo is being is the option if the, the, is, as the hemodynamics of the child initially was like, okay so it was vv ecmo was done but if there is compromise then one might consider getting we ek mo as well so that that's how we uh, that was a journey uh, of this child unfortunately child could not make it uh, and uh, very very sorry for the family thank you so much for uh, watching this video uh, do subscribe to channel think pedia for more such videos on uh, pediatric icu cases and interesting cases thank you